Hello everybody. Today, we're gonna take this pair of chain stays, we're gonna toss them into the stay slayer, we're gonna miter the bottom bracket and the dropout end of these, and then we're gonna prep them and we're gonna weld them. It's a chain stay sub-assembly, strap in, let's get into it. This is the first bike frame I ever built, and I'll illustrate what we're talking about. The chain stays are the lower rear tubes, we have the bottom bracket shell, and we have the dropouts. And when you build a bicycle, a lot of people intuitively, they start with the front end of the bike, what we call the front triangle, and then they do the rear end. And so let's say this was a TIG welded frame. When you get into the rear end, and you're trying to get those, those welding angles so that you can see what you're doing, so that you can get your filler rods, so you can wrap around, it could really be difficult. And so what if you started with the rear end of the bike first and you did that, uh, it would make welding the toughest parts of the bikes a little bit easier. And if everything went terribly wrong and you scrapped it, you would be scrapping a lot less than if you started with the front end. I would argue that it's a little bit easier to build a bike if you start in the rear end. There are also other reasons that you might want to do a chainstay sub-assembly, but it is a supported workflow in the stay slayer, so that's what we're gonna do today. These are off-the-shelf mountain bike chainstays. I load them in. On the rear end, I have a dummy axle and the dropouts that I will be using on the bike. That allows me to set the, the spacing of these tubes lengthwise and widthwise. And then there's a millimeter scale at the rear end, and there's that layout grid at the front end. So I'm using a machinist square in that layout grid. There's all sorts of features built into this that you can see in the Stay Slayer overview video that help you get the tubes set up where you want them as easily as possible. I use a digital readout, the milling machine with a six inch milling vise, and I set up my cutter. This is a hole saw with a Paragon Machine Works Arbor. Going to set it for about 300 RPM and six thousandths of an inch down feed per revolution using the, the quill gearbox. It makes a nice sounding cut because this tool is it's made out of solid enough material to actually support the cut. Uh, these types of cutters actually, it can be hard to get a good cut without a rigid fixture um, because the tubing itself is a hard material, but it's kind of thin and um, you, you need a pretty solid setup to make good mitering so that you get a good surface finish and cut quality and so that the tools, your cutting tools last a while. On the rear end, we have to use this extra long arbor in order to cut both sides at once in the same setup. And so for this one, I like to back the feed rate down. I like to cut it at the lowest feed rate, which I believe is about a thousandth and a half of an inch per revolution. So it's a slower feed rate. It's just because the length of that, that arbor is so long, there's just less inherent rigidity on the cutter side of things. Okay, I'm gonna take these out of the mill. I'm gonna prep them and we get to weld these puppies up. How exciting. So I definitely want to deburr the tubes before welding. You could take the tubes out of the fixture and reload them. I kind of like knowing that they're in exactly the same position before and after deburring. So I just leave them in the fixture. You just got to be kind of careful with your hand filing. Here I'm getting these down to bright shiny metal. And I load them up in the fixture. So that's the sub-assembly mounting point there. It's got an argon back purge fitting. It uses all the same bottom bracket adapters and shims and outside washers. It's the same ecosystem as the creator frame fixture, essentially. It's all ready to go. Here's the fun part. Let's weld this thing up. Just like on the creator frame fixture, we have weld nub technology with the weld nub. It's where you click your, your welding clamp. And I'm just using the fixture for tacking. You know, we're going to get in there, we're going to lay down enough tacks so that we can take it out of the fixture and do the full weld out on the table. This is primarily a mitering fixture. I wanted there to be uh, rigidity essentially built into the tool so that it can support a healthy cut, a good cut. And that does include some of your welding access, but it's fine because you can get the tacks where you need them and then you can do the finish weld out on the bench. And I'm using my late 70s or early 80s Lincoln Ideal Arc 300 TIG welding machine. I came with this building when I bought it. It's freaking sweet. Got a 250 amp CK Worldwide number 20 water cooled torch with a flex head, a TIG finger. I have a number 8 alumina cup with a gas lens, weld mold 880T 045 filler wire. 
It's a sweet setup. It's all welded up. I had a blast welding it up. Hopefully that illustrated how you would do the chainstay subassembly process and maybe the merits of it in terms of, you know, this is easier to weld now and the front end of the bike isn't that much harder to weld when it has the back half on, but the back half is very hard to weld, especially when the front half is on. That's kind of the thinking. That's kind of the workflow. See you next time.